Hi guys, today we are going to look at Cambridge IGCSC past paper. Uh, it's the version 21 for 0610 for 2021 May June. It's for paper 2. So let's get it on. Okay, number one What is a characteristic of all? living organisms? This is an easy question, right? There are seven characteristics of all living organisms. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion and nutrition so you just have to pick one that belongs to one of these seven characteristics so this answer should be D sensitivity pretty easy peasy right Number two, the table shows a section of DNA taken from four different organisms. Which two organisms are the most distantly related to each other? So the organisms that are closely related to each other have base sequences of DNA um, that are very, very similar. So Think of these as sequences. So organism W has a base sequence starting with C to A. So C, A, C, A, A, T, C, G, A, A. X has base sequence starting from G and ends with G as well. And it has sequence G, T, C, A, A, T, G, G, T, G. So which is quite different, right? So let's try to find out how many base sequences are, or how many bases are in um, different order or different places. So this, so there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's, there are five differences between organism W and X. How about the others? So there are one, two, only two differences between W and Y. And it's going to take ages, so I'll just follow with, I'll just try to find the differences that, that are in the options. So let's have a look at W and Z, these guys. So there is one difference. Oh, there's another one as well. And one more. So in total, three. And X and Y, one, two. Only two differences. X and Z has one, two, and three. Three differences. So apparently, W and X has the most difference um, base sequence of all these guys, of all these organisms. So they must be the most distantly related to each other. So A is the answer for this one. Number three. Scientists discover a new species of animal. It has a segmented body with two pairs of legs on each segment. To which group of animals does this new species belong? Number three. Scientists discover a new species of animal. It has segmented body with two pairs of legs on each segment. To which group of animals 
does this new species belong? So this new species animal looks like it has a segmented body with two pairs of legs on each segment. This alone gives me a very good hint of what the, seg uh, well, what the animal is. So the segmented body is quite common in an organism called arthropods. So within arthropods, there are four, let's say, groups. And they are these. Arachnids have cephalothorax. Which cephalo means head, thorax means the chest. So the head and the chest is actually combined together, and it has abdomen, and it has eight legs. So I don't think arachnids is arachnids are the ones that we are looking for. Crustaceans, they are like crabs. The obvious one is a crab and. I don't think these guys are the ones as well because they don't have two pairs of legs on each segment. Insects, they have six legs and they have three segments, head, thorax or chest and abdomen. So these guys are surely not one as well. Myriapods. They have many segments, and there are two pairs of legs, on each segment. So, uh, for example, like uh, centipedes, there are typical myriapods. So, answer for this question is obviously D. Number four, the diagram shows a single celled organism called euglena, which labeled structures would also be found in an animal cell. So animal cell has several organelles that you guys should know. The first one is of course, nucleus, containing DNA and it controls the cell activity. Mitochondria is the common one as well. Ribosomes are also common and cytoplasm is also common organism. Surrounded by cell membrane. It does not have chloroplasts, nor does it have, does it have large permanent vacuole. So, these two are the answers. Oh, not the answers, actually. You have to exclude these. And the rest are the answers. So nucleus, cytoplasm, and cell membrane. So the answer should be C. Number five. The diagram shows some of the blood vessels and other structures in the human body. The blood vessels shown are all parts of the same so blood vessels. So let's have a look at what the blood vessels are. Blood vessels are made of cells, of course. And if same types of cells gather around, the structure is now called tissue. If different types of cells gather around and forms a structure, that's an organ. If different organs combine together, then they are called organ systems. And if the organ systems 
Come back together. They form what is called the organism. So I suppose the blood vessels are made of different, different types of cells. So it should belong to the organ. However, the answer is not B because the question is asking where does the blood vessel belong to? So it's the blood vessels are all parts of the same organ system is the answer. So blood vessels form a part part of the organ system. So it's not actually asking what the blood vessels are. It's actually asking where does the blood vessel or where do blood vessels belong to. So the answer should be C for this question. Number six. A photograph shows a plant cell nucleus measuring two millimeter across. If the magnification of the cell is times 500, what is the actual size of the nucleus? So this is typical M equals I over A question. So magnification is image size over actual size. So we know that magnification is 500. We know that the image size is 2 millimeters. We just have to do simple arithmetics. So the x, which is the actual size that we want to know, equals to 2 millimeters divided by 500. Hence, the answer should be, this is a simple one, b. Number seven, by which process do oxygen and carbon dioxide move between cells and capillaries? So let's just draw a cell and let's just draw a capillary. The cell needs oxygen for respiration and it needs to get rid of carbon dioxide. So breathing is not done by the cell or cells. It's actually done by human or animal. So we're talking about cells, so breathing is not correct. Diffusion is correct because the oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuses in and out of the cell. So that's the process that's occurring between the cells and capillaries. Excretion is not quite right. Getting rid of carbon dioxide is excretion, but we are also taking oxygen in, so it's not excretion. Respiration is not correct, although respiration involves both oxygen and carbon dioxide. This is process of making energy, so it's a release of energy using oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide as well. So it's strictly speaking, it doesn't actually talk about the movement between the cells and capillaries a movement of um, oxygen and carbon dioxide between the cells and capillaries. So the better answer or the best answer is B for this question. Number eight, which process is involved in the uptake of glucose by the epithelial cells of kidney tubules? Hmm. So our body just loves glucose. So it doesn't actually want to take the glucose away from our body. It doesn't want to excrete it. So the kidney, our kidney, actually reabsorbs all of the glucose that goes into the kidney. It doesn't let a single glucose molecule, actually that's a bit exaggerated, but um, to go out of the body. So even if our body has a lot of glucose, like high concentration of glucose already, and relatively low concentration is inside the kidney, 
it reabsorbs the glucose into the body where high blood uh, high concentration of glucose is so movement of particles or molecules from low concentration to high concentration is of course the active transport so the answer is a for this question number nine which element is found in proteins but not carbohydrates carbohydrates are made with carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Fat is made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen as well. Proteins, however, they're made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Hence, the answer should be C, nitrogen. Number 10. The diagram shows a short section of a single strand of DNA. Which strand of DNA will combine with this strand to form part of a double helix? So the DNA has many bases inside and these bases always binds with um, another or other bases. Uh, there's a rule called complementary base pairing. So A always binds with T, C always binds with G. So this A will have to bind with T, C with G, and T with A. So this is another side of the DNA. Remember, DNA is double-stranded, so it has two strands. And the bases always form complementary base pairings. Hence, the answer should be D. Number 11. Starch is digested by amylase in the mouth, but it is not digested in the stomach. What is the reason for this? This question looks a little bit tricky, but it's not actually that tricky. The difference between the mouth and the stomach is, of course, there are many differences, but stomach has very high acidity, meaning it has very low pH. This mouth has mid-range um, pH, so like 7, between 7 and 8. So the amylase is an enzyme and it's made of proteins. Proteins become denatured, so its, it's active site becomes changed when it is exposed to high or low pH. Or high temperature. So in this case, stomach's pH is too low for the amylase to function. So B is the correct answer for this one. The pH in the stomach is not suitable for the amylase to work. Number 12. Which statement describes a catalyst? So catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction and is not changed by the, the reaction. So um, the before the reaction and after the reaction, the catalyst stays the same. It, although it can actually change, the reason is the exposure to high temperature or high or low pH, like I said before, above. So this is actually about the definition of catalyst, so uh, just remember, just memorize this definition because it can't. It it usually, um, it usually came out in the exam quite often in the past. So 
it's always good to know the the definition of a catalyst because quite often you actually have to give a, uh, give a definition about the enzyme and enzymes are the um, catalyst so so if you just write this when you try to explain about the enzyme how you can get easy marks so that's a tip thanks guys number 13 a plant with stripped leaves was kept in bright light for six hours a leaf was taken from the plant and the chlorophyll was removed the leaf was then tested for starch using iodine solution which diagram shows the result of the test the color of the iodine solution is yellow brown so obviously if this leaf was soaked with the iodine solution the white strip will be stained with yellow brown color so the answer should be either A or D and this green stripe has probably has a lot of chloroplast and it's kept in bright light for six hours so it probably had enough time to photosynthesize so it produced a lot of starch molecules by photosynthesis and iodine solution reacts with the starch and it changes color to blue black when it is exposed to the starch or when starch is present so the answer for this question should be A. Number 14. The graph shows daily carbon dioxide uptake and transpiration by plant ag agave americana. Or agave. I think it's agave. The plant is adapted to live in very dry conditions. What can be concluded from this graph? let's have a look at this graph so it's the left side is showing co2 uptake and it belongs to this line with green uh, with black dots the right side shows transpiration the rate of transpiration and it's shown by the white dots the line with the white dots so as time goes by in the morning you can see the CO2 uptake is quite high and it drops during the day and it goes up during the night the CO2 uptake of the leaf or the plant is achieved through the hole or through the pores or holes called stomata so CO2 goes into the leaf or leaves, leaf, leaves, by stomata. So it looks like stomata are closed during light periods because the transpiration, uh, not the transpiration, but CO2 uptake is quite low. And when we talk about transpiration, transpiration is the loss of water vapor in the mesophyll layer of the leaf through stomata so water vapor is not going out of the leaf during the day as well that confirms that stomata are closed during the light periods hence B is the right answer D you can't say there is no water uptake during light periods we simply don't actually know but um, Transpiration rate is quite, I mean, it's not that high, but it's still there. So meaning that it's losing some of the water. That's going to cause a bit of water transport at the root. So I think there is a little bit of water uptake that's happening 
in the root because there's some transpiration. So we can't say D is correct. The best answer for this question is B. Number 15. Statements 1 to 4 describe stages in the development of cholera. What is the correct sequence of the four stages? This question actually came out in other exams as well, in other years. So we're pre pretty much familiar with this question, but I'll explain nonetheless. So cholera is caused by a bacteria called, bacterium called Vibrio cholerae. This bacteria, once inside the gut, causes secretion of toxins. And this toxin causes chloride ions from the gut to be secreted, or to be released into the gut. And of course, chloride ions are salt, the minerals, ions. So it reduces the water potential. Just gonna draw with the blue color. So it's going to reduce the water potential. Then the gut will think, okay, well, this, um, there is less water molecule inside the gut. So let's move water molecules from the gut, from inside. So this is osmosis happening. The water is moving from a high, con high water potential, not concentration, high water potential to low water potential, which ends up having a lot of water molecules and minerals, like chloride ions, inside the gut. And all this stuff, all these stuffs, they go out of the body system and the person becomes dehydrated, dehydrated because he or she has lost a lot of water. So the order should be four, one, two, and three. The order should be in this order with this sequence. Okay, so the answer is C for this question. It's toxin production is first. It causes chloride ions to go into the gut and then the osmosis happens because there's less water potential inside the gut and all these stuffs go out of the body causing dehydration in the person. So C is the answer. Number 16. What are the products when proteins are broken down? Proteins are made of amino acids. So the answer should be A. It's pretty easy, right? Number 17. The diagram shows part of a cross-section of a root. What are cells 1, 2, and 3? So 1 is looking at the root hair cell. The root hair cell has this funny looking extension to increase the surface area. So the answer should be either B or C. Number 2 is root cortex cell. And number 3 is xylem because mesophyll cell is only present in the leaves okay and this is looking at the root and root has xylem which transports water okay hence the answer for this question should be b Number 18. 
The diagram shows an onion plant that has been grown from a seed. Each onion plant takes two years to flower and produce more seeds. What is the onion bulb acting as in stage 3 and in stage 6? So here and here. So looking at the diagram, you can see the seed is growing quite well here. And you can see all the leaves are developed at, in stage 3. And at the same time, the bulb is getting bigger. This is because the photosynthesis is happening and the leaves are producing a lot of carbon, uh, carbohydrates and the bulb is receiving all the um, carbohydrates. So bulb is being sink in this stage. After two years, the bulb, the bulb is quite big at the moment looks like it's shrinking a bit and the flower is getting developed the leaves are developed and the flowers are also developed which means the bulb is sending the energy to the leaves and to the flower so now the bulb is the source of the energy so hence source so number three stage three is sink and stage six must be source Hence, the answer should be B. Number 19. What are the main vessels carrying blood to and from the kidney? So if you look at the kidney, blood goes in to the kidney and out of the kidney. And blood that goes into the kidney is always the artery. And blood that goes out of the kidney and goes back to the heart oops, is called the vein. So the artery always transports the blood from the heart. So artery is from the heart. To other organs and the vein is to the heart from other organs and the kidney is called renal the pulmonary means the lungs renal means the kidney hence the answer for this question should be C the artery transports the blood to the kidney from the heart vein renal vein transports the blood from the kidney to the heart. Okay? Number 20. The photomicrograph shows human blood. Which blood component makes antibodies? Looks like it's showing, the photomicro uh, photomicrograph is showing phagocyte, lymphocyte, red blood cell, and this one looks like plasma. Of course, the lymphocytes are the cells that produce antibodies, hence the answer for this question is C. Number 21. A child is vaccinated against measles. After a period of time, the child is infected with the measles virus. The graph shows the concentration of measles antibodies in the child's bloodstream during this time. Which statement is consistent with the information in the graph? Looks like Antibody concentration in the blood increased a little bit in the beginning and then increased quite a lot later on. So it looks like it's the. This is probably the, the effect of the first vaccination. So 
during, during vaccination, a person is injected with an antigen or attenuated pathogens. Attenuated means weakened. So, when antigen or attenuated slash weakened pathogen goes into the body, the immune system learns the antigen, studies about the antigen, and, and develops an antibody against that specific antigen or pathogen. So, therefore, the antibody production occurred in the beginning. It didn't occur for long. It just happened shortly. And then after actual measles virus infection, because there are memory cells that learned, there are memory cells that learned the um, antigen and pathogens, they act immediately and produce a lot of antibodies. So that's why in short time, antibody concentration in the blood increased dramatically. So the answer for this question is A, after the vaccination, the child produced memory cells. These memory cells are the ones that protect your body from many infections, many pathogens after learning what they are. So, one uh, A is the answer for this question. Okay. Number 22. Which sequence of changes takes place when we breathe in? So, when we breathe in, the diaphragm contracts. So, there's a, there's a lung and there's a diagram, diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts. Which causes, which causes it to move downwards. So it goes like this. And also the rib cages moves up and outwards, upwards and outwards. So the rib cage actually goes up. So the whole volume of the thorax gets increased. Increase in the space Space, if the space gets bigger, the pressure becomes decreased. So diaphragm contracts, volume of thorax increases, pressure in lungs decreases. A is the correct answer for this question. Number 23. The list shows some processes that take place in a human body. Which processes use energy released by respiration? So the energy that is released by respiration is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is a chemical substance that is used in many places in our body. For instance, it is used to produce new cells because, well, we need cells to live, right? So this is used to synthesize a few things, such as proteins, uh, glucose, like carbohydrates and fats and, and membrane and so on. So to produce new cells, yes, ATPs are needed. Transmission of nerve impulses from the eyes to the brain, yes, in order to send the signal via neurons, energy is required. However, three, diffusion of gases. No, we don't actually need any energy for the diffusion. Diffusion is passive transport. So passive transport does not need any energy. Only active energy does. So, 
the answer should be A for this question. Number 24. Which equation is aerobic respiration? By now, you guys should remember that the, the chemical um, equation for the aerobic respiration, which start off with glucose, which is C6H12O6. And since it's aerobic respiration, you need oxygen. And it produces, the reaction produces CO2 and H2O. Except the glucose, the rest of them needs to be um, balanced. Actually, the whole thing has to be balanced, but they all have six moles each. So the answer should be C. Number 25. Which statement about urea is correct? Urea is a waste product. It needs to be excreted and it is formed by enzymes, of course. Uh, it's formed from amino acids, excess amino acids. Amino acids are not stored in our body. So um, many of the amino acids should be excreted. They should be taken out from our body and they get converted to urea and they get excreted and this happens in the liver by the process called deamination and it's excreted by the kidneys so D is the right answer So in the liver, the amino acid loses amine groups. And then the liver uses the amine groups to form urea. And this urea is transported to the kidney where it gets excreted from the body. So the answer should be D. Number 26. The diagram shows the appearance of an eye when in bright light. Which row gives the correct state states of the iris muscles in bright light? So it looks like pupil has constricted. It's been constricted, so the size of the pupil is quite small. And there are two muscles that control the size of the pupil. One is called radial muscle. And the second one is called the circular muscle. In order to make the pupil smaller, the circular muscle has to contract. So whenever the circular muscle becomes contracted, it moves towards the center, the center. And at the same time, the radial muscle has to become longer. So it has to stretch or relax. It can't actually stretch, it can only relax because it's muscle. So the answer should be C. Radial muscles has to be re relaxed. Circular muscles has to be contracted. Number 27. What is the effect of adrenaline on pulse rate and blood glucose concentration? Adrenaline is released when a person or an animal is in danger, frightened or scared. 
So it's the it makes the response uh, called fight or fight, and in order to fight or fight, one should be ready, right? So the muscles should be ready. Muscles need a lot of uh, a lot of nutrients and oxygen. So the body has to increase its pulse rate, and it has to increase the blood glucose concentration in first of all in order to produce energy by respiration because the respiration needs glucose in turn ATP the energy is produced and the pulse rate has to increase so that the muscle gets more oxygen and nutrients faster So the pulse rate has to increase and blood glucose concentration also has to increase. So the answer should be D. Number 28. Which statements about auxin are correct? So auxin is it's a hormone. It's a growth hormone. It's not made in all cells in plants. It's actually made in a tip at the tip of the plant stem, actually, plant stem. So one is not correct. Oxygen causes cells to elongate. Yes, if oxygen is placed on the left side of the stem, it causes the cells on the left side to be elongated and cause the growth on the left side. And the plant becomes like this, curved like this. Number three, oxygen moves between the cells by osmosis. No, oxygen is not water, so it can't say it's, uh, it's it moves by osmosis. Number four, oxygen is unequally distributed. Yes, is unequally distributed because it's sensitive to the light and the gravity. So if the sunlight comes from the right side, the oxygen will be placed on the left side. It's going to be distributed on the left side only. So it is unequally distributed. So the answer should be D. Number 29. Scientists carried out a survey on the effect of giving up smoking on the risk of developing lung cancer. The results are shown in the graph. The scientists made three conclusions. Which conclusions are correct? Looks like a person who never smoked has the lowest percentage cumulative risk of developing lung cancer. 30 years ago, 60 years ago, continue smoking. Okay. Ah, uh, stop that. No, not. 30 or 60 years ago, it's actually st stopped smoking at 30 years of age. So this person stopped for longer time than this person. Of course, that makes sense. I was like, what? It's one of those trick questions, but then I guess it was not. So which conclusions are correct? Looks like... Okay. Let's look at number one. Stopping smoking reduces the risk of developing lung cancer. Yes, it definitely shows that. Age increases the risk of lung cancer for smokers and non-smokers. Would you say that is true? Age increases? Yeah, because you can actually see a slight increase definite increase in there in those two and slight increase in these two as well so yes number three the earlier people stop smoking the lower the risk yes this person sm stopped much earlier than this person and the risk of developing developing lung cancer has decreased quite a lot right so the answer should be a for this question
Number 30. A zygote has 10 chromosomes in its nucleus. Which row shows the number of chromosomes in the cells of this species? So zygote is a diploid. Because zygote means sex chromosomes, the gametes, combined together. So both of them are haploids. So they have, they're both ends, single ends, and zygotes are diploid, so that's 2n. And it says zygote has 10 chromosomes, so 2n equals 10, which means haploid, chromosome, uh, haploid nucleus has 5 chromosomes. So sperm cells should have 5, body cells should have 10 Embryo cells should have 10 as well. So the answer is C. Body cells are diploid cells as well as the embryo cells. Okay. Number 31. How will the composition of a pregnant woman's blood change as it passes through a placenta? How will the composition of pregnant women's blood change as it passes through the placenta? So, let's have a look at the embryo, umbilical cord, and pancreas. Not pancreas, oh my god, placenta. So this is placenta. The actual role of the placenta is to filter and select the nutrients and substances that should go to the embryo. To keep it happy. So the concentration of dissolved oxygen as it goes as the as the, um, the composition of the women's blood enters or uh, passes through the placenta the concentration will decrease. We're, we're looking at this. We're looking at the blood of the mother. The mother's blood has a lot of oxygen, but then they're taken away from the mother to, to provide them um, to the embryo. So the concentration of dissolved oxygen in mother's blood decreases. The concentration of urea gets, I guess, gets increased. Because the embryo still produces urea, although it cannot, it cannot move freely. As a waste product, it produces a lot of urea and passes to the mother's blood. So the answer should be B for this question. So embryo usually gives like many waste products to the mother. And mother um, usually gives like good stuffs to the embryo and urea is of course it's not good stuff so yeah number 32 what carries a copy of a gene to the cytoplasm to make a protein so in order to make protein what does a cell need it says it's a copy of a gene so gene, genes are usually, or initially, within DNA. And then when a part of the DNA is copied, it becomes RNA. Or rather say mRNA. And then by translating what is written in mRNA, proteins are produced. So answer for this question is D. What carries a copy of, a gene, of the gene? If the question was asking what carries the gene um, in the cytoplasm, uh, actually not in the cytoplasm, in the nucleus to make a protein, then it's B, DNA. But the question asks the copy of the gene to the cytoplasm to make a protein. That's it's talking about the process of translation. 
Translation occurs in the cytoplasm. Actually, I'll delete everything. I'll just make it clean and explain to you guys. So this is a nucleus. Within the nucleus, DNAs are present. The DNA gets copied and it forms mRNA. And this mRNA goes out of the nucleus to the cytoplasm and gets translated. And that is helped by organelles called ribosomes. Like this. So it has words cytoplasm and copy of the gene to make protein. So the answer should be D for this question. Number 33. Which statement about meiosis is correct? Meiosis is a cell division to make sex cells, such as sperm cells or egg cells. And it forms four non-identical cells. So they are genetically non-identical. So A obviously is not correct. The chromosome number changes from haploid to diploid. No, it's the other way around. It starts with diploid and then turns into haploids. It is used to produce body cells. No, like I said, it is used to form sex cells. It allows the formation of new combinations of chromosomes. Yes, this is true. Because all these guys, the results, all these guys are that genetically non-identical, which means the chromosomes are all in um, new combinations. Okay, so D is the correct answer for this question. Number thirty-four, colorblindness is a characteristic that is sex-linked. Which statement about colorblindness is correct? So it says it's sex linked and colorblindness is a recessive condition. So males are sec, uh, XY, females are XX. So if the males um, are colorblinded, they must have this recessive allele on its X chromosome. If the females are uh, colorblind, colorblinded, both X chromosomes should have recessive alleles. So for this one, the gene for the colorblindness is located on the X chromosome, like I said before. And the colorblindness is more common in males than in females. This is true because for males, it could be either normal or colorblinded. Normal or colorblinded. However, for females, you could be normal, career, or affected. So. So there's one in three chance of having colorblinded condition. As for men or males, they have one in two chance of having colorblinded condition. So statistically speaking, colorblind is more common in males than in females. Hence the question uh, answer for this question is B. Question number 35. The graph shows the percentage of different blood groups in a human population. 
Which type of variation is shown by human blood groups? So variation, oh, there are two types of variations, continuous variation and discontinuous variations. And the continuous variation, for example, um, is like weight, even height, anything that you can present or you can express in numbers or that, that has um, the intermediate values. Before the blood groups, you can see there's no intermediate values. They're all discrete values. So they are discontinuous variation. And often the discontinuous variations are only affected by the genetic factors. So even if you, let's say, um, become veg vegetarian, Okay, for instance, it doesn't make any sense at all, but even if you become vegetarian and eat veggies only for the rest of your life, it's not going to change your blood group in a blood type. Nothing, nothing you do won't change your blood type. So it's all genetically determined before you're born. So continuous variation on the other hand, it's affected by both genetic and environmental factors, such as weight and height, right? If, you're, if the environment is, um, uh, is providing a person with a lot, of, a lot of, let's say, healthy food, like a lot of food, then a child or the person, the child, is likely to become tall, right? That he or she has more chance of becoming tall than a person who doesn't have, who doesn't have much uh, food around him or her. So continuous variation is affected by both factors. However, discontinuous variation is only affected by the genetic factors. So the answer for this question is D. Number 36. New strains of the crop plant wheat can be produced by crossbreeding disease resistant plants with those that give high yields of grain. So the crop plant wheat can be reproduced by crossbreeding disease resistant plants with those that give high yields of gain a grain. So this is crossbred with this. So this is a classic example of artificial selection. Artificial selection is formed by selective breeding. So selective breeding leads to the artificial selection and all these new strains of crop plants gain an ability Actually, they don't actually gain ability, they're offsprings. Their offsprings will gain ability to, to become a disease resistant. Okay? So, the answer should be B. Number 37. The diagram shows the flow of energy. Which form of energy is transferred at points 1 and 3 in the diagram? So the sun gives the light energy, so it's, the answer is either C or D, and the rabbit gets eaten by fox, and rabbit's flash acts as chemical energy and given to the fox. So the answer should be C for this question. Bing! Number 38. The diagram shows the feeding relationships in a food web. Which organism may feed as both a secondary and a tertiary consumer? So we have to find an organism that can, that can be both secondary and tertiary consumer. So the easiest way to do so is just to count, just by counting the number of arrows. 
So we we'll start from grass. And we're not going to go this way because it's shorter. We just have to find the longest one because it's, it's, it's likely to be a tertiary consumer. So grass, grasshopper, not blackbird. It's going to go, actually, let's go to the blackbird. And then you can go to the fox. So there are three, three arrows. Tertiary mean th means three. So yes, fox first of all, is a tertiary consumer. Probably will be the only tertiary consumer in this uh, food web. And so I would just go for A first, but let's just check if it's also secondary consumer. Yes, it is, because starting from the grass to mouse and then goes fox or grass, rabbit, fox. So rabbit and mouse and grasshopper, they are primary consumers and that's secondary consumer. But if you go this way, then fox becomes the tertiary consumer as well. So the answer is indeed A, okay? Number 39, why are bacteria useful in genetic engineering? Why are they useful? First of all, they're plasmids function as vector. So vector is a substance that can deliver the gene or the DNA or RNA, whatever it is, the genetic information. So bacteria have plasmids that can act as vector and we can insert the DNA or the gene and we can put it in some other species of organism and then that organism will gain an ability that they didn't have. So the answer for this question is C. A would be right if we change this different to the same. So their genetic code is same to other organisms, which means if we insert um, the bacteria gene, bacterial gene to something else, uh, let's say the bacteria gene said, okay, make protein X. If the gene is inserted to some other organism, the organism will also produce protein X because the genetic code is the same. It's the same in many, many organisms. Well, they do have cell walls, but that doesn't mean it's helpful. It's useful in genetic engineering. It just doesn't make any sense. They reproduce A. They, they reproduce asexually, not sexually, so D is not correct. That leaves us with the answer, C. This question is the last question for this paper. Question 40. Which hormones can cause the feminization of male fish? So we just have to find the female hormones. Adrenaline, nope. They're, we can find both. Uh, we can find them in both sex sexes or genders progesterone is indeed the female hormone testosterone is not it's a male hormone c is the right answer because the estrogen and progesterone uh, they're both female hormones so the answer for the last question for this paper is c hey thanks guys um if you guys have any questions, just leave me comments.